Hello, and welcome to the New York State Archives Spring Cleaning Webinar Module Series, a family of short presentations providing overviews of topics related to managing your records. This module's topic is developing a five-year plan. My name is Sarah Durling, and I'll be your presenter. In this module, we'll introduce the importance of records management program planning, discuss what a five-year plan is, provide a high-level overview of how to get started, creating and implementing one, and how to keep the momentum going once you get it off the ground. Records management is an ever-evolving activity that benefits from having an established program and committed records management staff to run it. A good records program changes and grows along with the government it supports. One way to ensure that it keeps up is by engaging in regular program planning. Program planning can be one of the most exciting aspects of records management. It's an opportunity for records management staff, usually headed up by a records management officer or RMO, to take a good look at their program, establish where they currently stand with regards to the success and functionality of the program, and make plans for where they want to take it going forward. Records management programs do, that do not look to the future and don't take advantage of the opportunities available to them will often stagnate with unfortunate long-term consequences. For example, a program that chooses not to address their electronic records needs as they arise may find that a few years down the line they have to face a bulky backlog of records that can be expensive to deal with in both time and money. One way governments can develop their programs is by creating a five-year plan. A five-year plan is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a plan that sets out what a government wants to do in the next five years within a defined scope. Typically, these plans define one or two long-term goals, and then develop plans to achieve these goals in shorter, manageable steps that build on each other and feature well-defined short-term goals. For example, a government may want to take their current paper-based program digital. The five-year plan will define what that means for them while breaking out the steps that they need to take each year to achieve their goal, with meaningful checkpoints at each stage of the plan. Five-year plans can range from fairly simple and straightforward to fairly ambitious in nature, but will, will be the most successful for governments are ones that are realistically grounded in what they can achieve given their current situation and available resources. No major transformative initiative can happen within an organization in a vacuum. They require top-down support and buy-in from stakeholders. To that end, before governments begin developing their five-year plan, they want to make sure that they have the support of top-level leadership. This is critical not only to get approval for any proposed plan, but also to garner support when implementing it. Next, it's important to build a project team. Include members from all major stakeholder groups. Each member will bring in the perspective of the user group they represent. They may have ideas and see issues differently from another group, and they should be a voice supporting the project back within their own user group, promoting the buy-in to the plan. Once the team is gathered, it's time to start developing the plan by brainstorming what it needs to include. This can mean different things to different projects. Some governments may go into their five-year plan with a fairly defined idea of what they want to achieve and just need to nail down the details. Other governments may go in with few expectations and need to define their goals from the ground up. No matter what direction a government comes at their five-year plan from, it's important that during the development phase, project participants are gathering information to support the decisions that are being made. There are potentially many sources of information available. A government's own staff is always a source of information. Discussing proposed goals and plans with the project team and smaller focus groups of staff is always important to understand the impact and feasibility of the plan as it's being developed, what resources are available, if there are any competing projects that may affect it, and what sort of enthusiasm or resistance the plan is likely to encounter. If existing reports like risk evaluations or needs assessments exist that will provide helpful information in putting together the plan, they should be consulted. For example, if there are multiple avenues the plan could take, a needs assessment may allow a government to prioritize them by importance. Other governments 
that have already implemented projects similar to the ones being proposed by the government can also be a useful source of information as well. They can talk about their experience providing information about timelines, costs, and unexpected speed bumps that then can be considered while developing the plan. The plan itself should be fairly straightforward. It should include a scope statement defining what the project intends to do. By defining the parameters of the project, the team gives itself boundaries to work within, which can be beneficial in, in preventing scope creep, which is when a project starts expanding and taking on goals and responsibilities outside of the original intended plan. It should provide what other background information is necessary to set up the project. What is included is going to depend on the project proposal and its complexity. The plan should then establish the long and short-term goals that will be achieved in the next five years. Once the long-term goals are established, the plan can break out the short-term goals within them and then the short-term goals into specific project plans. Breaking out the plans into manageable chunks helps ensure that the plan will be successful and that participants don't burn out. Here's an example of a simple, very high-level plan. A government's records program has fallen into disarray, and they need to get it back on track. In the next five years, they want to get their paper records organized and start to gain control over their electronic records by implementing a content management system. At the end of five years, they want to be at a point where they can start identifying paper record series that they can digitize. They've started to break out year one, which is the year they intend to inventory their paper records into short-term goals. Each one of these goals can be broken out into a project plan with explicit timelines and assigned responsibilities. When developing a plan, it's important to acknowledge reality. Is the plan being proposed actually achievable within the established time frame? Are the resources and support there to make it happen. For example, while a government may have the desire to digitize all of their records by the end of year five, do they actually have the resources to make it happen? Is there the tech support, the money, and the support from management? If not, can they be acquired? Grounding plans in reality improves the likelihood of their success. When putting together the project plan, make sure to allow for adequate time and resources to get the work done. It's often easier to finish a section early with extra resources available than to locate resources or funds at the last minute to ensure that it ends on time. And make sure that change management is built into the project wherever it affects the work of others. Part of the plan's success depends on its acceptance by the government staff. If any part of the project is going to change how a staff member does their work, then they should know about it and have an opportunity to provide input about it in advance. Once the plan is finalized, hold a kickoff meeting to launch it. It creates a sensation of excitement around the project, but also makes sure that all of the staff involved are in the loop and on the same page. Meetings with the project team to update them on its project, on its process, progress, and plan for the next stage of the project should be held regularly. Stick to the work plan as best possible, acknowledging that sometimes the timelines and activities may shift due to unforeseen circumstances and try to avoid, avoid scope creep. The plan is to set out a specific set of tasks and goals. If it starts shifting to address a broader set of goals, that may mean it's time to reevaluate the plan. The project plan should be revisited every two to three years to ensure that it's still on track, still valid, and still the direction the government wants to go in. Having a regular review of the plan allows for the opportunity to change course as needed, because sometimes things don't turn out the way we anticipate they will. Have the flexibility to revise the plan and make changes to it, and if changes are needed, update the staff of the changes accordingly. As we close, the key thing to remember is that all records management programs require some level of program planning as they move forward with projects, no matter how simple, because they potentially affect the entire organization. 
The five-year plan is one way to address those planning needs and to do so in a way that allows for long-term project planning. Please remember that as governments develop their projects and plans, the New York State Archive stands ready to help you, providing any advice or training that you need. Please contact us at any time if you have any questions. Thank you for listening.